so good to be in the house of the Lord. And I thank God for each and every one of you in the house here. Thank God for those that's online this morning. For God is good. And the word says, of the song says, every praise belongs to our God. Hallelujah. Praise God. I guess y'all see I have a new praise instrument this morning. I don't want that other one. It broke, but we got some super glue. And my wife put it back together, but since they bought me a new one, I said, I'll check out the new one. Amen. We bless the Lord. Because I'm going to bless the name of the Lord as long as I got strength in my body. Hallelujah. Praise God. Don't want to be before you uh, too long, but I'm, I'm getting better, y'all. I tell God, hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God, because y'all know how hard it is for me to sit down doing no songs any at all because when I come to the house of God I come to bless his name I bless him because I appreciate him for life health and strength every breath I breathe for it's in the Lord that I live move and have my being so I'm going to bless him when I get to the house and I would love to have help when I bless him but whether I get help or not I'm going to bless him anyway for God is good all the time, and I thank him. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Those that have your Bibles, let's go to a familiar passage of Scripture over in Matthew, the fifth chapter, praise God, beginning at verse 1. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. And it reads, And seeing the multitudes, he went up on a mountain, and when he was seated, his disciples came to him. Then he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are the hum those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall attain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when, you, when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Let us pray. Father, in the precious name of Jesus, Lord, I bless you and thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. And we declare, God, that your word will go forth unhindered and that your word will have free course in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, do what you will as you will in the mighty name of Jesus. God, and I pray that the word that you send, God, that it will take root and bring forth the fruit that you desire. For we declare that the enemy shall not steal that which you send. In Jesus' mighty name it is so. And I thank you, Lord. Amen and amen. You may be seated. Praise God. And as the Lord was ministering, praise God, to me in this particular passage of Scripture here, Jesus is basically talking to two groups, the disciples and the crowds that had gathered uh, to hear the message. But he really was directly speaking to his disciples because he wanted to teach them the kingdom principles. The disciples were his followers, and he wanted them to understand how the kingdom operated. Praise God. And he was teaching it to his children, but because of Jesus' reputation, whenever they found out Jesus was going to be somewhere, the crowds was going to be there. So he allowed them to be seated, and they got to hear the message as well. You know, Jesus was going to explain to his disciples about the kingdom uh, principles, praise God. And as we go through the uh, Beatitudes, which this is called, and you know, uh, and sometimes they call it the Sermon on the Mount, 
but I want you to know this is the greatest sermon ever preached by the greatest preacher that ever taught. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. And that was Jesus himself yeah. explaining this word. And he began to let the folk know what he was talking about. And what dropped in my spirit when the Lord was ministering was blessed and don't recognize it. Blessed and don't recognize it. You got so many saints today running all over the place looking for a blessing, praise God, when the blessers on the inside, if they are a saint, amen? Because if you save, Jesus lives on the inside of you. Praise God, hallelujah. And as we read this passage, because it is so familiar, a lot of times we just read over it and don't get what's behind the message. Praise God. So I want to encourage you this morning because as you notice here, every verse begins to talk about, beginning there at verse 3, blessed. Praise God. All of them says blessed. And what he was trying to get the disciples to understand, you are already blessed in spite of the outward circumstances. The worst things we can do as a believer is judge how we are doing based on what we see externally. But we need to look internally because if you are saved, Jesus lives on the inside of you. And if he's living on the inside of you, then you're doing all right. Praise God. And a definition for blessing, praise God, could be considered a state of well-being where the kingdom followers of Christ enjoy and extend the goodness of God in their lives. That's a good example of blessed right there. In other words, a state of well-being, praise God, where kingdom followers enjoy and extend the goodness of God in their lives. In other words, the blessings that you get, they're not just for you. You are being blessed so you can bless others. Praise God, because when God called Abraham, he says, Abraham, I am going to make you a blessing, and through you, all nations will be blessed. So God allows his blessings to flow towards you so you can use those blessings not only just for your benefit, but let those blessings flow on to somebody else that needs to be blessed. So if you're going to look for a blessing, you just better keep being a blessing. Praise God so that it can flow through you. Because see, when God bless you and you're not considering being a blessing, your blessing is getting ready to get cut off. Because God don't bless us just for us, because he works through us, so we must be a blessing to others. Praise God. And you see, when God talks about his Holy Spirit, praise God, and when God gives us that joy, that's a way of life. Praise God. Not an event. Praise God. In other words, joy is like that inner river flowing within you. In other words, you're not moved by the circumstances, praise God. You are moved by what you know, and you already got inside of you, I am in a state of joy. You see, you are blessed and don't even recognize it. But as he began to tell them, he says, blessed are the poor in spirit. He wasn't talking about just being physically poor, but what he was saying is if you're poor in the spirit, that means you understand that you are dependent on God himself and that you need to seek him. That's what he's talking about. And if you're poor and begin to seek the Lord, then you got what you need. In other words, he wants you to look inside and not on the outside. Praise God. And as I looked up that word uh, blessed in the Greek, there's a Greek word called Macarius, praise God, which was an island outside of Greece. But also in the Old Testament, this word Macarius spoke of the, the high officials, those that was very well off, praise God, and they were in a, a, a place by themselves basically excluded but they had everything that you need. But that word Macarius in the Greek, praise God, meant blessed, praise God. And as a result of that, there was an island outside of Greece, or uh, ancient Greece, that used to be called Macarius, and it was called the Blessed Island. And the reason it was the Blessed Island, because that island produced and had natural 
vegetation, and everything that they could need, it was there in abundance. And so, in other words, they did not have to leave the island because what they needed was on the island. What God is trying to show us, you belong to the Lord as a believer. He's living on the inside. God and Jesus both, they already blessed. They was blessed before he even made the creation. When the Lord stepped out and said, let us create and begin to make this world, praise God, he was in a blessed state, and everything that he made, he said it was good. Because, see, he wasn't looking at the, the darkness and all of that to determine what it was going to be like. Because he created it, and he was in a blessed state, he said it was good. In other words, he was a bad boy. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. See, he understood what was going on. And saints, we better understand what's going on, too. See, Blessed is the state of our well-being, but it's internally. Anytime you get this extra stuff, the new houses, the new cars, the new clothes, you know, the new job and more money and all that, that's just the bonus. Your blessings is not determined by the external things that you have. Your blessing is determined is whether the blesser lives on the inside of you. And that's whom you are seeking. Anything else is bonus. And the folk on that island, they did not have to leave. But when they left the island, it was just an extra that they had to do. But they had everything that they needed right there. God is trying to let us know that when we've got him on the inside, we got what we need. But what we need to do is exercise obedience to his word and begin to walk out his word to help build his kingdom and quit looking for things. The things will come if you do what God says do. Because as you bless others, that's going to keep the flow going because God's word reproduces at its own. Praise God. So the residents, they didn't need to leave that island for nothing. Praise God. And because... Uh, in 1 Timothy 6, 15 and 16, it says he will manifest in his own time he who is blessed, only the potent, the king of kings, the Lord of lords, who alone has immortality dwelling in an unapproachable light whom no man can see or have seen or can see to whom be honor and everlasting power. Amen. Now, some Bible would say, you know, a ver no viral lights or no shadow of lights. And, but what he's trying to let us understand that um, there is no change in him. If there's any change, it's in us. And let me demonstrate that. Deacon, step up here a minute. Praise God. Stand right there. Praise God. You see, give you an example. The earth rotates on a 20, you know, 24 hours, the earth turns. So as the earth, and, and, and Deacon is representing the sun. You see, the sun is always shining whether we see it or not. Because the sun was created to give light and shine, and it's shining even when it's dark. It's just that what's happening is because we are on the earth, and the earth rotates slowly 24 hours a cycle to make a complete turn. So as I begin to walk around him, Praise God, as the earth is rotating. At some point, you see, I got my back to him. And when I got my back to him, that means it's turned dark. Praise God. Yeah. So that's what we got called nighttime. But as I rotate on around, yeah. praise God, I get back face to face. So that means I got some light. You see what I'm trying to tell you, what the Lord is trying to show you. Sometimes when you're going through your life and you're having a life of depression and you're having a life of like and, and this issue and that issue, and you allow that to determine on who you are and how you feel, that's not walking by faith. That's walking by what you see. And that means that your back is turned on God because that means you forgot that he's on the inside of you and you running somewhere else trying to find the blessing. But the Lord wants you to know that he's on the inside. Everything that you need is in there. And when you begin to declare his word and begin to speak his word, you're going to see him begin to move on your life. Praise God. And the word here talks about 
whether you're having to go through mourning or whatever, you're blessed to even do that because God is going to give you comfort during that time. You see, there is no situation that we get in that we're not already blessed because the blessing is on the inside. You got to determine in your mind that I am blessed and quit allowing the outside things to determine whether you're blessed or not. Folk think that you're only blessed when you got a pocket full of money. Praise God. And when you got the big house and the fancy car. But Paul says he learned how to be content when he was abound. And he learned how to be content when he was abased. In other words, it didn't determine whether he had a dollar in his pocket or not. But what was important was is he knew who he belonged to. And because he knew who he belonged to, he was still all right. He still considered himself blessed because he was on a mission to do what God sent him. Praise God. And when we start looking at it like that, you're going to find out that a lot of the natural things that you want, they're going to show up because you're no longer focusing on the natural, but you're focusing on the spiritual. You're focusing on what God called you to do and what God is speaking to you. And you're learning how to be obedient to the word because the devil has deceived so many saints. He got saints running and seeking after everything that exists. And every time something new come out, they got to have it. Praise God. But when you get to the church and it's time to sow or somebody's in need, you say, I got to keep this because I'm planning for my retirement. Praise God. And I don't want to do this and I don't want to do that. But let something new come out. Name brand, you got it. And don't know as quick as possible. Praise God. But we got to change our way of of thinking and begin to think like kingdom kids and kingdom kids operate according to the word of God. As I share with you so many times, we're just pilgrims passing through this land. This earth is not our home, but it's temporary quarters because we're living so we can go and be with our Lord and Savior. We are ambassadors on this earth representing heaven, showing earth how heaven operates. Praise God and let them know that I'm representing heaven so I want Walk according to the principles of heaven, not according to man's rules and man's laws. Now, yes, as a citizen of heaven, I'm supposed to obey the law as long as the law does not conflict with the word. But when there's a conflict between the word of God and what man law says, as a kingdom kid, I got to go with the kingdom because I'm an ambassador for heaven. And I got to stand for what's right. And so he letting them disciples know that when you get persecuted for my name's sake because you decide to take a stand on what's right and you're going to be in the minority when you do that because this day and time everything goes. Praise God. Anything that the law or whatever folk want or don't like about the law, they get their group together and they go and begin to... Uh, petition, praise God, until they can get it turned to their favor. But I don't care what law they put on the books. The law does not outdo what God's word says because God has got his word and it says in Psalm 119, I think around 89, it says his word is forever settled in heaven. Praise God. And when the Lord began to call Jeremiah, Jeremiah was nothing but a child. Praise God. And Jeremiah had a little bit of hesitation. The Lord said to Jeremiah, he says, don't be afraid of the people. Don't look at their faces because I'm going to put my word in your mouth. And when I give you my word and you declare my word, it's going to stand because my word is settled in heaven. The word of God is not going to change because the word says that it abides forever. And so saints, you are blessed 
and you better begin to recognize it, and you better begin to act like that you know that you're blessed. Praise God. When you accept that Jesus Christ who came to live inside of you, then that meant that it didn't matter what was going on on the outside, but what was happening was on the inside. Praise God. And so when you get it on the inside and you begin to develop the seed that God has placed within you, praise God, then you will begin to develop that that he's given you because God said before you was ever born, I knew the end from the beginning. And when you accepted him, it went into you in seed form. And in order to get it, you got to begin to work the seed so you can bring forth the harvest. Praise God, because you don't just eat the vegetables that's on the table. It came from a seed, and then somebody had to work with it to bring it forth until it come to harvest time so that they could gather and get it to market. The same thing with us as saints of God. When he saves us and put that seed on the inside, you ain't fully grown. You is as a baby, and you got to develop that seed on the inside until you begin to grow. And we cannot grow until we take this word and begin to use this word and understand it. And the Bible says that my tongue is as the pen of a ready writer. So when I need to change something, I start writing the story with my tongue by declaring the word of God because God's word is not coming back to him void. But when God speaks, that's what it is. And no devil and demon in hell can stop it because God is going to do what he says he's going to do. But all he asks for us as children of God is to walk by faith and not by sight. It ain't based on how I feel and it ain't based on what I think. But if I'm not thinking according to this word, then I'm off course and the results that I'm going to get is off course. But if I walk according to that word and stand on God's word, God's word will be fulfilled. Now, I might have to walk to the very end, but it's coming to pass because God's word is not going to fail because it said that it would abide forever. It's a, like a rock. It ain't going nowhere. And the devil can get up all in your face, but you just need to stand there and declare that I am a kingdom kid. I am standing on the rock, and that rock is Jesus. And if you take me out, you're going to have to take Jesus out. And if I recall my history, I remember that Jesus walked into your territory, snatched the keys of death and hell from you right around your gang, and you could not do nothing about it. Praise God. So in other words, he whipped you and shamed you in front of your boy. So if you come after me, you got to get through Jesus to get to me. I am blessed. You are blessed because your blessings is not determined by the outer circumstances, but your blessings are determined based on the inside. Does he live in you? For the word of God, hallelujah. And so when God placed that joy in me, see there's a difference between joy and happiness. Happiness means you get excited and all jumpy, you know, real excited because of what happened at the moment. But when it don't go your way, your head hung down. But when it going your way, you're jumping and, and just going crazy. But see, Joy says, when it don't go my way, what I do is I say, God, you're still on the throne. I still give your name the praise, the glory, and the honor. And I'm going to keep walking because if it didn't come what I thought, that means you got something better. So God, I'm waiting for that that you're sending my way because I'm going to bless your name anyway because it's not determined on what I get. But the word says let everything that has the breath to give me praise, glory, hallelujah, hallelujah. 
That's why it's so hard for me to understand when saints can come to the house of God and not even open their mouth, not even wave their hand. Praise God, I understand that everybody might not be able to stand, but I believe that if you're breathing, you can say hallelujah, thank you Jesus. You can wave your hand, pat your feet, but you can give God some kind of praise. Hallelujah. But I want to let you know today that you are blessed. Praise God. And the joy that's on the inside, you don't have to let the outside circumstances determine, but you still declare that I'm blessed. Praise God, because we ain't seen no better example than Paul. All the things that he accomplished, but look at all the things he went through. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers out of them all. Praise God. In this life, you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, for God said he's overcome. And if he overcome, that means we overcome. And I just want to bless the name of the Lord. I declare to you right now the joy that I have. The world didn't give it to me, and the world can't take it. The peace that I have, the world didn't give it, and the world can't take it. Hallelujah. I just want to bless the name of the Lord. It's in the Lord that I move, live, and have my being. It's not by my strength, but it's by the name of the Lord. Praise God, everything that I do. The word says I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens him, strengthens me, praise God. And I need him every moment of the way. That's why I'm so grateful over the little things as well as the big things because the Lord deserves the praises regardless. Regardless. It don't matter what I got because I'm representing the kingdom of hell. If you're a believer, you're an ambassador as well. God has called us to expand his kingdom. God is concerned about souls. And if we get it right and understand it, if you focus on what God said and what he called you to do, all that other stuff that you desire, it will flow your way. When God bless you and you turn around and bless somebody, you become a channel for the blessing. God says, oh, I can trust that one. Because if I send it, they're not just going to hoard it away and put it in the investment account. Oh, they're going to give me my part, and then they're going to help somebody else that's in need, and then they're still going to be able to put some away. And because their heart is right, and the way they give, it's going to continue to be an open flow. Open flow. And every time the devil tries to snatch something, God going to increase it. Praise God. But you have to understand that blessed is a state of well-being. To enjoy the goodness and to extend that goodness that God has given us. Kingdom kids should be enjoying kingdom benefits. We don't operate like the world. We shouldn't operate like the world. We should get our advice from the Word of God. Compare every decision and every move we make to what the Word says. And when it is contrary to the Word, you have to excuse, say, excuse me, I'm going to the Word. And as, be, as I begin to close, I had a dream. Praise God. And as I began to meditate, I told my wife, I said, it's a little bit crazy here. But for some reason, I had placed the kids in this school, and it was a mixture of different ages and, and all, but it was like a top notch for the, the real smart kids or whatever, the high average kids. And so when I got there, for whatever reason, I must have been a minute or two, and the lady had started. So I had some papers I needed to turn in, and I Gabe was going to approach her assistant, and when I began to approach her assistant, praise God, the, the lady that was in charge that had started, she turned around and snatched the papers out of my hand. 
And I said, you didn't have to snatch the papers. And then she began to say, well, you don't talk to me like that. I'm in charge and I do like I want to do. I said, right is right. And you're free to say what you want to say. But you need to say it in a respectful manner. So she says, oh, you go into the office. And she grabbed me by the arm. I said, you don't have to grab me by the arm. Because first of all, if I didn't want to go with you to the office, you couldn't hold me. I'd go on about my business. But I'm going to the office because you're wrong. And it need to be shared and respectful. And so we went to the office, and she got to the principal. She began to explain her case to him. He dropped his head, and he told the woman, he says, can you not see what you're doing. You go back to that classroom because this case is dismissed. Because for whatever reason the rules was and she was sharing that, because you you uh, disrespected or you did this, you're going to get five weeks in jail. I said, if you're wrong, you're wrong. But I'm going to stand for what's right. And when I stand for what right, if that means I got to stay in jail five weeks, I will be in jail for five weeks. She thought I was crazy. But when the prince got, he dismissed the whole thing. And so I said, Lord, what are you trying to tell? And it came to my spirit, you got to still stand for what's right. And sometimes it's going to cost you when you stand for what's right. But as this song, this, the word there, Matthew 5 says, blessed are you when you are persecuted for righteousness. All God is saying is, it's time for the saints to stand where they say they stand. And if we stand where we say we stand, and we believe what we say we believe, then we've got to demonstrate it so that this world will see that Jesus is alive and well. And as I begin to look at it, it began to, the Lord began to remind me, it don't matter. And I have been saying it, and I said, thank you, Lord, for the confirmation. It don't matter what the outward circumstances. It don't matter what I'm going through. My job is to believe that you're working in the midst of everything that's happening. And then I must hear you so I'll know my next move. And when I hear it, I got to be willing by faith to step out on it. Blessed and don't recognize. Saints quit running all over looking for a blessing. You are blessed regardless of what state you're in. It's a matter of how you're looking at blessing because the blesser lives on the inside. And that means everywhere you go, he's right there with you. Blessed and don't recognize it. Let's start recognizing our blessing and appreciate the fact that God has given us another day. There's so many folk that did not wake up this morning, but he allowed you to wake up in your right mind and come to the house of God. He allowed you to dress yourself. That's enough to thank God for right there. You cannot take it for granted because life is not promised to you. You never know when your number will be called. But the word says everything that has breath ought to praise the Lord. And there were some folk that laid down doing all right yesterday and woke up today and can't even speak. They hear, but they can't speak. That's why we take advantage of every opportunity. But you see, when you begin to bless him, it catches on with others. And you might be doing all right right now. But as old saying go, keep on living. Because if you stay in this life, the Bible itself says, in this life there shall be tribulation. Right. 
So your day will come and you're going to need somebody to help you. So will you help them praise God while they are going through and waiting for that victory to show up? They already have the victory. It just needs to manifest itself at the present moment. God's word does not lie. He and his word, they are one. And when we stand on it and declare it, we'll see him begin to move. It won't be no church as usual. It'll be a different ball game. Get into the word and allow God, allow God to show you what's behind his scripture and then begin to be obedient to that word. As I did the demonstration with the earth rotating around the sun, there's going to be a dark time. Don't turn your back on God. Stay with God by getting into this word. We thank God for his word, and I'm going to ask the choir as they come back. <laughs> Praise God. If we've got someone here and you're outside of the family of God, the word of God says it's by grace, Ephesians 2 and 8. It's by grace that we're saved and not by works, lest anybody should boast. You accept the gift of salvation by faith. It doesn't mean you got everything together. Because if you did, you wouldn't need a Savior. The Word says we all was born in shaping and born in iniquity. So we all needed a Savior at some point in time. So you're not the only one. And don't let the devil deceive you saying, well, I got to get it together and then I'll, I'll go. No, you won't never get it together on your own. It'll take the Lord to help you. That's why he says it's by faith. He extends the gift of salvation by faith, believing in the work that Jesus Christ done on that cross and that he rose, shed, died, wrote, and was buried and rose, shed his own blood so that we could be a part of the family of God. While we were yet sinners, he loved us so much that he died for us. That's how much he wanted us to be a part of his family. And all he says is, if you will accept what I've done by faith, then you become a part of the family of God. For the word says it is by grace, not by our work. We can't work our way into heaven. It has to be by faith, according to his word. If there is one, you're welcome to come at this time. And when I say come at this time, that means into the family or into the kingdom of God. Not a number here. If God speaks to you and say, yes, this is the place for your home, we welcome you here, but it's about being part of God's kingdom. So just because you accept salvation don't mean I'm trying to recruit you here because God got the place where he needs you to be. And if it's here, you're more than welcome. But he may allow you to come into the kingdom, but he may place you in another house because that that he has for you you'll get fed what you need there to accomplish what he's calling you to do. The doors are now open. If there be one, you're welcome to come. And I'll give you a minute or two, but it's all by faith. And as you get into that word, the seed is implanted, and then you begin to develop that and grow. Amen. Amen. Praise God. If we don't have one at this time, we're going to get ready to prepare for our altar prayer. I mean, you, you're welcome to come to the altar. You're welcome to sit, stand right where you are, wave your hand or whatever your point of contact. But if you have a prayer request, we ask that you make it known at this particular time. Praise God, and we'll join as we prepare to go before the throne of grace. You may go ahead and let your request be made known at this time. Praise and God. Traveling mercies for Amaya and her mom and covering while they're out of the country. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. 
Bishop Dan, did you uh, mind praying for us? Praise God. Bishop is going to lead us in the prayer. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And when I think about the goodness of Jesus. Yes. yes. Hallelujah. And all that he has done for me. Yes. Then my soul cries out. Yes. yes. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 I lift you, my hand and just thank God. Thank you. Yes. For thank blessing Lord. me. Praise yes. God. Our Father and our God, we yes. come just now. Yes. In the matchless name of Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Yes. First, God, I just want to take a moment to thank you for all of your thank goodness, you, all of your kindness, yes. and all of the mercy that you sent our way, God. We want to take time just to thank you for that. Thank you, Father. Thank you, God, for allowing our golden moments Praise God. to just roll on. Yes. But we come now. Thank you. Names have been called out. Yes. yes. I know not the reason why. Mm -hmm. Jesus. But God, you know everything. Yes, Thank yes. You, Lord. you know all about us. You know all of our needs. And God, right now in the matchless name Glory. of Jesus. For those that are in this room right now, that cried out today, would you touch them right now, God? Thank you, Lord. Touch their bodies. Yeah. Touch their minds. And Thank you. Touch their condition. That yeah. touch their surrounding, God, Ooh. to make it what you know that they need right now. Yes, Lord. For the names that they cried out for folk that are not here, God, we ask that you would visit them right now. Thank you. Let your presence be known right now to them, God. Yeah. That they know that you are the one that can handle all situation, regardless to how bad the situation might be, God. Yeah. Would you Thank you. just let your presence be known right Thank now? You, Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. To those that are listening today, God, whatever they're crying out for. Yes. Rock those airways only as you can. Yes. Thank you. Let them feel your presence as only that you can, God. And let them know that you are still God, regardless of the situation that they're dealing with right now. Thank yes. you. And that you can change it. Yes. Then bless this church. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. In a mighty way, God. Mm -hmm. From the door to all the way to the walls in the choir stand, God. Yeah, Don't yeah. leave out a single one of us. Thank we you. all need a blessing from you. None yeah. of us are complete. That's yes. right. Glory. Yes. And as they lift their hand, would you bless them right now? Thank you. Wherever they are, would you bless them right now? If they Thank lift their God. hand and just cry Hallelujah. out to you right now, Hallelujah. bless them, God. Hallelujah. Glory. Thank you, Father. And as you bless us, as our pastor has taught us now, let us not forget to give your name the praise. Yes. Thank you. This is our prayer. We yes. did it all in the matchless name of Jesus. Yes. Thank you. And when all of God's children said, Amen. 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 Praise Amen. God. Bishop, thank you. Thank you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. <laughs>